And interstellar doesn't just mean Matthew McConaughey. It doesn't mean anything from our system of stars. It's interstellar. It lies between two suns. And so, this thing came from somewhere far away, outside our solar system, and is just passing through. We've only ever seen something like that three times. Is that why it's referred to as three eye? Yeah, because it has three eyes, as opposed to one eye or two eyes. Three eyes make it. That's precisely right. It began, as these things frequently do, with a dot. A small, stubborn point of too much light slamming into the star field. Too quickly to slanted and to open to belong to our star. It was noted in surveys. Software ranked it. Astronomers checked it. Then the designation came next, an extrasolar star candidate traveling without orbit on a path that could close. If it were confirmed, it would be our third such event ever seen. We call it 3i Atlas, for the survey that first noticed it, and for the straightforward fact that it is not from here. The narrative appeared as early as the first week, clean photometry, the careful measuring of light, corresponding to a bright, compact source. The precise plotting of astronomy fit a hyperbola. The position of visitor's mathematical signature was to fast to be captured by the sun. Early orbit solutions were in agreement. It would arc in, skim across the inner system from a high angle, and gradually blend into the dark again. Yes, it's interesting. Dangerous? No. A research note, a headline, a footnote in a future textbook. After that, updates began, new days and nights, new positions and error bars. Nothing dramatic at first, just the small, uncomfortable truth every observer knows, reality is never perfectly your line of fit. Astronomers did what they always do. They folded in the new measurements, reweighed the old ones, and ran the solver once more. The orbit was pushed, the term breath for velocity, the stretched uncertainty ellipse in one direction before unwinding in another. It's normal. It's routine. Until it isn't. By late in the campaign, the phrase no one likes to use quietly entered internal notes, mismatch, tiny but persistent. The light wasn't getting brighter and more intense exactly according to the same distance law from the sun. The motion in the sky plane showed subtle leftovers, differences between where the equation said the object should be and where the telescopes actually found it. On a whiteboard, it looks like a handful of virtually nothing. But in orbital mechanics, that little almost nothing can develop into thousands of miles. Did astronomers miscalculate? Yes, in a narrow sense, because they started with the easiest prevailing belief regarding how this operates, like any other small body. In a broader sense, error is the wrong word. The research was meticulous. The procedure worked. It turns out the object may simply be more complicated than our initial model. Why is this important? These are not rails and rocks. The sun warms them, ices vaporize, gas vents. A wellspring of microscopic dust forms and disappears. Each jet is a tiny thruster nudging the nucleus. For most comets, the non-gravitational acceleration is weak, messy, and generally far away from the sunlight. By adding a few parameters and terms, a small push here, a small push there, the fit gets better. With a quick, weak interstellar object, there is a problem. There aren't many photons, not many nights, and no second chances. So you take exquisite care, tie every measurement to reference stars, calibrate each color term, and you must still choose. Do we incorporate non-gravitational terms? If so, how many? If not, are we pretending away real physics? That is what this is all about, miscalculation. The first public orbit solutions utilized the most pristine gravitational model. As new data came from additional telescopes, the residuals suggested that a purely gravitational path was not revealing the entire story. Add a physically reasonable outgassing and the fit gets better. However, the uncertainty now grows because you've increased the model's freedom. It is not a lack of skill, it is the cost of honesty. If you're looking for this to be a terrifying tale, it isn't a secret engine or a hidden message. It's uncertainty itself. 
a degree in the amount of a few thousandths in angle coming in, a few tenths of a kilometer per second in sky plane velocity, advanced over several months becomes significant shifts in position later. The community keeps updating predictions, not because the sky has changed its thoughts, but because the model has absorbed more truth. Let's anchor a few facts so your audience knows who they can rely on. First, an origin in another galaxy is determined by the speed and shape of the path. If the eccentricity, how open the curve is, measures greater than one following careful fitting, we refer to it as interstellar. That's the same criterion used for Amuamua 1i and Borisov 2i. The 3i atlas is being treated the same way, evidence-driven, not hype-driven. Second, we have no credible evidence of radio transmissions, thermal heartbeats, or any artificial behavior. If anybody asserts that, ask for the observatory, the observing log, the frequency, and an independently verified analysis. Sensational claims are clicks, careful claims are citations. Third, the phrase slowing down needs context. Objects on open, sun-skimming paths always trade speed for distance. Gravity causes their outbound deceleration, it's weaker farther from the sun, just as it's stronger closer in. Kepler, in its purest form, the only anomalous slowdown would be one that departs from the Keplerian expectation after you've accounted for the minuscule outgassing push that acts like a rocket. The teams are evaluating that. Can a realistic, physically motivated model reconcile the non-gravitational term with the data? 